Hey guys, what is up? Red Panda Mining here. How are you guys all doing? I hope you're all doing well and having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be just showing a couple of software here that I use in Windows to overclock and undervolt my graphic cards for mining. Now, I hope this will help some of the new miners that are coming in to the crypto mining ecosystem, per se. And I know that most of you guys who watch me already know how to do this, but if you already know, then you can close the video. But if you don't, and you want to know how to overclock and undervolt into Windows, stay tuned. I'm just going to show some things here. Now, for people that mine in Windows, okay, so there's, there's a few things here that we need to make sure of before we start installing all of your overclocking software and stuff. So make sure most of you guys install your latest driver for your video card, okay? So for example, if you're on the AMD website, you can go here and download your AMD card uh, or NVIDIA card, which would be NVIDIA.com for their drivers. So make sure you have that all installed uh, because once you have that installed, then these kind of softwares such as MSI Afterburner and Overdrive Endtool will be recognized in the software. Okay, so let's talk about MSI Afterburner first. So this is probably one of the most popular softwares to use in crypto mining for people that use Windows. And I know, I know there's going to be some people that use Hive OS and uh, Miner, uh, Stat, and I don't know, some other, some other Linux based uh, software out there. That's fine. That's fine. But for people that want to use Windows like me, I'm, I'm a huge, I'm a huge Windows miner. I've just been, you know, just very used to it. And I haven't made the switch over to any other uh, platform yet. So, but with MSI Afterburner, you can go ahead and download it here. Um, this is one of the popular popular overclocking softwares to use for NVIDIA cards. I, I don't really use these for AMD cards, but some people do. Um, but I'll show you AMD cards later. But for NVIDIA cards here, I use MSI Afterburner. And I'll have the link down below in case some of you guys don't know uh, where to download it. So it's on guru3d.com. And as you can see here, uh, there's you know a bunch of features that MSI Afterburner has, but mainly once you see these features on their about page here, you just go down at the very bottom and download the 4.6.1, okay, stable, final. So uh, you guys may see here I have the 4.6.2 beta 2. The reason why I have this one is because of the RX 5700 XT, <laughs> just so it can show up here. but. Uh, for this, for this, uh, for most of you guys, if if you don't have a 5700, you can just use a 4.6.1 version uh, for your 10 series GPUs or AMD cards. But mainly, I like using MSI Afterburner for NVIDIA cards. Okay. Now, once you have it downloaded, you guys will see it here. Install it, all that kind of stuff, and then, uh, for example, I have a GTX 1070 here. Uh, it's the third card on the right there after the Red Devil, okay? Now, with the 1070, I'm going to just showcase what I normally do. Uh, so, with, with, with NVIDIA cards, really easy. Uh, I bring it down to about between 70 or 80, 80 power. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to do 70 power limit. So, you go ahead, drop it there. You may notice the temperature limit also drops down too. Uh, that that pretty much just follows with the power limit, and next we we can see that there's core clock. Okay, so core clock, depending on what you're mining. So if you're mining on core-based algorithms like Equihash, uh, a, a couple of different ones out there, not Ethereum, but for example, if we're going to do Equihash algorithm, you can just go ahead. I do about you know either plus 150 or one or 50. Okay, so. I'm just going to put 150 here for the core and for memory it depends also on the algorithm but for Equihash I'd like to bring it up to about 300. I don't I don't do max but uh, about 300. Uh, some algorithms you can do all the way down just have no memory clock and because the Equihash algorithm is based on just the core it's really core dependent so uh, your hash rate and uh, doesn't affect uh, with memory but I'll just put it at 300 and then you'll maybe want to change your fan speed okay so fan speed I just do about 60 
Again, this really depends on your ambient temperature, where you live, all that kind of stuff. I just hit press check mark and there you go. Now the settings for your GTX 1070 or any Nvidia card really is applied. So what I just showed here is really what you can apply to basically all Nvidia cards for mining in Windows. Okay, MSI Afterburner is probably one of the most popular ones to use. and Again, if you're mining Ethereum, I would do on a GTX 1070, for example, minus 200 core and plus 600 memory. Now, a big thing is if we're using GPU Z here, which you can download for free, depending on the memory type of your NVIDIA card. So, example, on my GTX 1070, we have Micron memory. And on my 1070 here, I'm only able to go up to about 600 uh, memory safely, reliably. And for some of you guys, you guys may get like a Samsung based card, like a, uh, I have an RX 580 here. Actually, let's go here, RX 580, and it has Samsung memory. So with this card, I'm able to overclock it even higher. So it really depends on what kind of memory that you have on your card. Uh, if you have Hynix, you won't be able to get that much um, good Ethereum hash rate with Hynix cards. But Micron or Samsung, you're, you're good, you're golden. Um, so, yeah, in my experience, I've had Hynix cards mainly on the 1060s. So, for anything 1070 and above, you're going to get Micron or Samsung memory. Okay, so that was really for NVIDIA cards here. Now, in case for you AMD guys, I know that there's a lot of people that have AMD cards out there. I use uh, Global Wattman and Overdrive Ntool as of late. So. Um, with, with Global Wattman here, for example, we're just going to go th here through here. Um, so if you open up uh, Radeon settings, uh, you go to Global settings and then uh, the Wattman, Global Wattman here. Uh, this is what I use to overclock and undervolt the GPU for mining. Okay, so uh, where to download that is on um, AMD's driver and support website free to download make sure you pick the driver for your card specifically and as well I did say AMD uh, sorry overdrive end tool which is very popular here I have the link down below um, this is if you don't want to use Wattman I've had success with both software so you can download the latest version 0.2.8 and this will help you get to the uh, the the overclock settings so let me show you here real quick so overdrive end tool for example um, you can see here since I have since I have the three cards on this mining rig and of course you don't have a you don't have to have a mining rig you can just have a simple gaming PC but with this mining rig I have three cards on it right now this is just my test bench but you can see here I have the 5700 XT RX 580 and the GTX 1070 which is not supported this this tool is only supported for AMD cards now example we're going on an RX 580 okay on Overdrive end tool, just real quick, and then I'll go to Global Wattman. Uh, so here, the P7 states, okay? This is basically where for your core on your card. So an ARX 580, you know, for typical Ethereum mining is 1200 core, maybe 850 to 900 millivolts, okay? I have mine here at 900, but you guys can test between 800 or, you know, 925 or 825, you know, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of different settings that you can do, um, and then you know I would test out all these different settings. Make sure you get the proper hash rate, stability, all that kind of stuff, and as well as the memory. Okay, so the memory, since this is a Samsung-based memory card, an RX 580, I'm able to go to about 200, uh, 2,250 memory on this one, and I'm able to bring it down to about 850 millivolts. And then here, the fan speed, you guys can adjust these to your liking. And then that's it. And then you press apply, and it'll apply the overclock settings. And then also you can save these uh, profiles if you want, and give them a name and all that kind of stuff. And if, it, if you lose it, you just hit load and apply, and boom, there you go. It's already applied the overclock. Okay, now let's go to Global Wattman. This will be the last one I show you. These. These are really the three popular softwares I use. Uh, Global Wattman here, you can do the same thing. Overdrive Ntool does the exact same thing, but depending, in my experience, I've had stability issues with Overdrive Ntool well, and Wattman as well. 
and also it also depends on what kind of miner that you're using <laughs> it's 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 just your uh it's just what you like and what you guys have good experience and st good stability with and basically overdrive end tool um, with with global global Wattman here, it's basically just an interface for for overclocking your GPU here, and you can see some graphs and temperatures, fan speed, all that kind of stuff. Um, some people prefer Overdrive N Tool, which I totally agree. It's actually much easier to do it this way. But with Wattman, you can do the same thing by just entering in the P7 states here, 1200 core, 900 millivolts. And then uh, your memory, your frequency is down here, 2,250 2, and 850 millivolts here. And then you can adjust your fan speed a little bit lower right here. So just by dragging this here. And of course you want to do it gradually. You don't want to just have a standard, you know, 60% the whole way. Just in case it gets hotter and hotter and then you hit apply. And there you go. It'll apply all the settings. So there we go guys, that was just, I don't know, just a real quick video, nothing too fancy. Just for the newcomers that are interested in learning about overclocking software in Windows. I know I've had these kind of questions before, but I, th I, hope, I, I hope I helped some people uh, just figure out some of the overclocking software that you can use. So these are my three favorite ones. I know there are a couple of other ones out there. Uh, there's the Sapphire Strix software which looks like it had a nice little interface uh, UI update and it looks pretty slick actually it looks like it has some uh, VBIOS selection and like some other stuff here I don't know I haven't tried it yet I don't really use this I've used it in the past but I don't know if you guys have used it let me know and then lastly guys I just want to end off with if you guys need any other help um, just more regarding how to do stuff there's this website called the mining chamber miningchamber.com and they have awesome guides here on how to overclock you know certain cards so they have an RX 580 8 gigabyte overclock card uh, guide here and really there's some really nice uh, overclock settings for eth hash and overclock settings for kryptonite R and all that kind of nice stuff so check out miningchamber.com and as well, there's another website that has more guides, is mining.help. Now, this website is pretty thorough as well. So it has a lot of nice, uh, you know, some overclocking settings and how to do it and explanations on, you know, different memories, you know, Samsung, Hynix, Micron, Alpida, and MSI Afterburner, of course, which I just showed. So take a look at the site if you guys want to read through, if you don't like my explanation in video form, but you can check it out. Uh, on here as well. I'll have it linked down below for all these websites. So anyways guys, let me know what you think about this and I appreciate you guys for watching. Have a good one and peace out.